This is a poem by Al Purdy called Deprivations. And uh, it's about standing right here. Stand quietly here on the lake shore and fish swim up in their lighted ballroom at your feet doing a sun dance. Small bass, so near transparency, they're nearly not here at all, but peering back from the other side of becoming, coming closer, closer, very close, and I'm a thousand foot giant to them, certainly not supremely unnoticed, not less than nothing, no tear or blank spot would suddenly appear in the landscape if I weren't there. But dozens of myself in their eyes would wink out. Among the fingerlings, two bullet-bodied cruising adults drift dark with adult problems. If there was a post office down there, they'd be leaning against it. If there's, un if there's employment, they don't want to find it. They are incurably fish. And for that reason, a faint disturbing reproach to whatever I am. I stand a few moments in my aquarium of air and they examine me from their water incubator. A key turns somewhere in a lock, now stops and stays here and clouds are motionless. To think that these are prototypes of the first one definitely weirdo and oddball who dragged himself painfully away from the salt waves, away from his quicksilver buddies, crawling up a gritty sand beach for stubborn personal reasons, to send up dry housekeeping and raise a family. I can't return there, of course, have only this moment of childlike rare communion and sudden overwhelming energy of things without the heritage and handicap of good and evil which they escape easily with one flick of the tail and something they do not know. When I move my slowly stiffening body and they scatter into diamonds, it is like a small meanness of the spirit they are not capable of and that is one difference. Um, So why did you choose to read this poem? Well, um, Al's a deflector. In his life and in his writing, he deflected people seeing him be serious. Mm. And so it isn't surprising that his most popular poems are joke poems and rough, clowny poems. Um, the Al who stood down here and looked at the fish in the water and thought of evolution and uh, his own blink in it uh, is is the poet that that I admire. Yeah. And he he went back there to his writing studio and he sat in there and he would use a carbon and he typed like this on 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 down the page and you can feel him in this poem taking it further than it might be if it were a little imagist poem uh, until until it isn't just about a moment or seeing fish it's it's about everything mm -hmm. and it's about his relationship so he he's seen through a world for a moment he's identified and that's why i think that he wrote this partially in response to dh lawrence's famous poem the fish which uh, dh lawrence doing the very same thing looking down into the water says Fish, oh fish, so little matters. And um, just saying that cuts right through and Al says the same thing. So I think that uh, in part this is Al's way of paying homage backward to D.H. Lawrence. But Al's best poems hide their shadows. So there isn't anything here that says for D.H. Lawrence or um, a quote, oh fish, so little matters. He's, he's let the poem eat that and have it because he doesn't want any voice there but his own. And then he wipes it out. So all you see is fish scatter in a shadow. 
I think that's a very admirable thing. And, and to come down to that, uh, that little difference, that small meanness, right? When you realize the poem's called Deprivations, you realize that what he's, what he's moving towards and moving towards there is that little small meanness of spirit that he would have them scatter and that he was capable of that. That's the difference. They're not. Right? Yeah. He saw that. That's a real poetic thing. Yeah. And a clown doesn't see that. No. So. Yeah, what do you think about that? The fact that his most popular poems are often poems that I don't think are really characteristic of him as a poet. Um, does that bother you at all? Or is uh, it just kind of like, oh, well, that's what the populace wants? And... It doesn't bother me. Uh, he would read those mm -hmm. when people requested them. Um, I knew him best and came here uh, when he had stopped drinking, okay. as I had. And uh, so we talked about how great it was to be in Greece and live in Greece when you were younger and be blind-faced, okay. drunk on yeah. Retsina or something. Yeah. But um, he, was, um, he was in some ways invited to push that persona ahead of him. Mm -hmm. But um, since he's died, stories come out like from uh, David Mason, the uh, bookseller in Toronto, who knew Al as a really serious uh, bibliophile, who really scouted books. And I've met a number of people across the country who said, Al would be going through town and he called me out of the blue. I didn't even know him. He said, somebody told me you know where the good bookstores are. And he'd go and he'd scout and he'd pick the best books, mm -hmm. just take them. Right. He was real serious about that, but he didn't. Um, he didn't let that be known. That yeah. was, yes. Well, when I was in high school in grade ten, somebody in Fenland Falls, somebody left a copy of the Caribou Horses on the bench outside the cafeteria, and I found it. Okay. And I don't know how it got there. It wasn't a library copy, but um, that's that's where that started for me. It was, serendipitous, I guess. And uh, for me, um, I'm always looking for voices like Alice Munro's and uh, Al Purdy's and James Rainey's that, that in which I can hear the Ontario rural voice, the Ontario rural poor, um, that cadence, and Al has that. Um, so, so uh, he did that for us, and it is the country of our defeat, but when you write a poem that well that says so, you climb above the defeat, and so we need more poems like that, and we need more people to honestly say, uh, we're being defeated here, folks. Um, but ultimately, it's poetics. It's not about uh, politics. It's about just that cadence, that Ontario sound. He's got it. it the, there's a story of Washboard Hank tells. Al used to travel all across and read. Washboard Hank did it too, and he's got he's got a. a Ontario license plate that he strums. He was in Calgary. Somebody yelled at him, why do, you, why do you use Ontario license plate? Right? And he said, well, Calgary license plate sounds like crap. <laughs> right? And, and uh, Al's a bit like that. Um, I don't think until he came along, people knew that Ontario had a rural voice. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to say about Al? Mm. No. Okay. <laughs>